This game doesn't skimp out on the difficulty. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton. I am your humble narrator, and welcome to my Dayton Dissects of Black Gods 2, a strategy adventure RPG by Datalik Studios. Datalik Studios is one of my favorite storytelling studios, definitely. A lot of people will shout telltale, telltale, but um, to me, the, the Daedalic stories cut a little deeper. Uh, you start out as Cassia, and she has a horrible, horrible backstory, but eventually you'll get into it, and it does take a little while to get into the game, uh, but you collect your, your gladiators, as they are called, and attempt to take over the world as the Spider Queen. Which is a pretty cool story, I think. So here are your gladiators in a town called Hero's Hedge. And you are able to shop for many things at the blacksmith. They also have um, an alchemist where you can buy potions and things like that to equip onto your belt. Your gladiators are Narim, Zuraban, and Takate. And then there's Mr. Cassia. And... Aside from Takate being named after a Mexican beer, I think they're all really cool and fun to play. <laughs> and you can equip different weapon sets to them, which is pretty nice. I'm going to stick uh, some arrows and a bow on Narim, because he is the warrior. And there are different sizing, six different sizes that somebody can be in this game. And you're able to shoot over the head of somebody shorter. Which makes it pretty cool that Narim is a warrior. Fortunate. And I'll give Cassia a dagger because that is what she is trained in. And I'll put a bear trap on her belt. Because <laughs> nothing bad could go wrong. <laughs> Eventually you'll get to pick your fights from the overworld map. Each point you take over has different uh, abilities that it adds to your collective power which is pretty great the map is gigantic which means many many hours of gameplay and an extremely good story to match so eventually you come to this combat screen and it will offer you your choice of heroes and mercenaries depending on which boxes don't have locks on them so I get one hero I'm gonna pick Narim and for my mercenaries, I think I'll do kind of an even spread. You can tell by the icon next to their name what their actual class is. So I'm going to take a couple of swordsmen, a couple of spearmen, and a couple of archers to this fight. Because that seems nice and round. Unless I can think of a reason not to. I'll take some more archers just because... Uh, the dwarf is short, and he can shoot over his head. So that seems like a, a wise decision. And then you get into combat and get to place your party. So I'm going to put the swordsman here, spearman, and archer, spearman, archer, archer, dwarf. There's lots of levers and things you can hit during combat. This opened up a door over here. There seems to be a hidden chest back that there. That could be useful. Well, the bird drops should be here any second. Traps? You? Well, the dwarf gets wiser with age. And fatter. They're coming from the wrong side. Who let them into my caves? Maybe your fine golden doorknob broke off. Run and gather as much gold from the coffers as you can carry. I love the voice acting in this game and the, the great storytelling is also paired up with some great combat right here I'm gonna create a wall in order to trap the the pursuers who obviously my little party of four can't defeat there's many many pursuers so uh, defense is the best thing we can do here so I'll pick this square and stretch it to that square and boom! The mage casts a wall that nobody can get through, even the spearmen who can hit from one space away. So, pretty cool. I do like 
the mechanics of this game a lot. The one of the bad things is uh, reinforcements. Now the goblins come, and you'll end up with a screen like this, where initially it was only five or six goblins, which can be frustrating. But uh, it this game doesn't skimp out on the difficulty, which I do appreciate a whole lot. Overall, I would say that Blackguards 2 does offer an above average amount of fun. I would give the game a solid 7 out of 10, maybe even a high 7 out of 10, but there are some setbacks that need to be looked at. The pros, uh, it is an excellent 4x strategic combat with a great, great storyline, fantastic graphics, fantastic aesthetic, which are all used to the fullest. I like the some stages have objects hanging in the foreground, which is pretty cool. And the stage is very greatly in task and environment. Neutral points, uh, the music is... It's really good, actually, but I find that it's a little understated. Uh, I'd like to see it brought out some more and, you know, I, I want to be humming it the next day. That's what I consider great music. And this didn't quite meet that expectation, but it's still really good. Um, the lore is really deep in this game, so if you haven't played the original Blackguards, you might be a little lost, but the veterans of Blackguards will, will truly appreciate the lore that is implemented. Some negative points would be that the UI is a little bit clunky just because there are multiple ways of casting spells. Uh, it takes about two hours to get to the meat of the storyline, which is disappointing, like this overworld map uh, takes a long time to actually see. And character creation was taken away, which is a bit of a disappointment, as I don't think it would change the story that much. Um, and it was something that was in the original Blackguards, and I'm not quite sure why they took it away. I guess so you could identify with a strong female protagonist. Anyways, 7 out of 10 is what I give to Blackguards. Not too bad. Thanks a lot Data Lake Entertainment for the review copy and allowing me to do my thing with it. Gross. <laughs> Until the next time, friends. This has been Blackguards 2. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye! One? Two, three, four, goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.